Oh, what's cool, man? What's happening with you guys? We got the New York Giants this time for another draft breakdown and draft grades and roster preview getting in anticipation for the season. Oh, we're so early, but hey, we're never too early. Let's see how the Giants did and start off with Deontay Banks Corner from Maryland, Landover, Maryland, coming here to New York. And Deontay Banks, really good value at 24 overall. I, look, I wasn't as high on Banks as some other people out there in the community, and I respect that. I think Banks has all the tools to be a really, really good cover corner. And his tackling ability, it's the best in the class. This guy just doesn't miss, man. And that's a credit to his lateral agility, his technique, and all the things that he can do. So I really do like him. Wink Martindale is going to be really happy to get himself a stud corner. And Adore Jackson, they've talked about maybe moving on from him. So it doesn't like throw Cordell Flott out of the mix. He's still going to be a rotation, I would imagine. He can play in the slot too, but Banks can play in the slot. Overall, it adds to a secondary that definitely needed some influx of youth here. And Banks is going to provide that. Me personally, like I said, I just wasn't quite as high. But I think at 24, that's a good value for Banks. Really good value. Uh, 20, uh, second round pick, Jean Michael Smith, 57 overall. They took him. I love this one. This is a great addition to their offensive line. Help us, Seguin Barkley or Eric Gray. Hey, whoever's running back here, they need more help on that offensive line, and they do a great job at getting arguably the best day one starting center in this draft class. John Michael Schmidt is going to provide something that they've been looking for some continuity on that front. And I think they've done that now. I mean, this is a, this is starting to look like a potentially good offensive line. If Joshua Zudu can come along, they get themselves something going there on that off that front that front five. So John Michael Schmidt's gonna had some huge ability on that interior. Love that pick, Jalen Hyatt. I would have been happy if they would have gotten him in the first round. Jalen Hyatt here, uh, as much as again, I was a little bit lower on on Jalen Hyatt, but at the same time in the third round, 73. You look at Darius Slayton's contract. It's really like a one-year gig. They're probably going to look to get on and move on from his contract. They could save a little bit of money. They could save like $7 million. Jalen Hyatt could be a nice deep threat for Daniel Jones long-term in that role. So overall, I love this one. 73, it's great value. Absolutely. So good job there, in my opinion, to, to get yourself a nice speed threat, maybe a Will Fuller type in your offense. Next up, Eric Gray here in the fifth round, 172. Good value. I thought about this and uh, getting some debt by Saquon Barkley, something they've been missing. So overall, good good draft pick here. Uh, next up, Trey Hawkins from Old Dominion. Another athlete, man. Old Dominion's got some crazy athletes. What is it with Old Dominion? Holy mackerel. I mean, Nick Solivari, they got some good prospects in general. Underrated. Anyway, taking athletes in the end of the draft, I don't have a problem with that one. And this guy's a good athlete. Got good size. He's probably put on a little bit of muscle mass, a little wiry for sure. But, I mean, with his, uh, you know, overall athletic profile, could be a nice stash and develop corner that in a couple of years ends up being a starter. You never know. Take a chance on him. So I don't have a problem with this pick. Next up, Jordan Riley. Interior depth. Don't really see, you know, tons there. But uh, some interior defensive line depth. I would have liked them to go defensive tackle a little bit earlier. I will say they're going to need to think about the future with Big Cat Williams and uh, Dexter Lawrence about to get paid the bag. So they're going to need to they're going to need to look at that interior for sure. Uh, lastly, Javarius Owens. Javarius, I love that name. Javarius Owens from Houston, and they get a little bit more depth there. He's a ferocious guy, man. He's got some good uh, tenacity on film, and I, I don't think he's a crazy athlete or nothing like that, but. A solid backup space, but I see him more as a special team guy, and I think he's going to be a great special teamer, so help out your special teams. I don't have a problem with that one. Let's look at the roster itself, though, here, and recapping everything up. Still, you know, the offensive line, guard position, who's going to be their starters? Is it a Zudu? Is it a Bad Bredesen? You know, besides Gl Glowinski, who's going to be your right guard, more than likely. Uh, but there's, there's still, you know, some question marks. Hopefully, Evan Neal takes that next step. But they're they're doing everything in the right direction in my view to get themselves going there with Shane and Dable prioritizing you can tell getting better on this front for Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley and then their right receiving room is still going to be a question mark no doubt about it they don't have a number one but they have a lot of guys right they've got a lot of guys Darius Slayton, Wondell Robinson, Isaiah Hodgins um, Sterling Shepard, Wondell Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, Jamison Crowder like they've got a lot of guys that you know they can play. There's no high-end number one here, but taking a chance on some dudes. Oh, yeah, Paris Campbell, pardon me. 
Told you, I'm still still trying to work out getting all these rosters updated. But I'm like, that's not that's not Wondell Robinson. That's Paris Campbell. Like, what's he doing there? But no, Paris Campbell obviously being a pickup, which I love that deal. Getting him, bringing him in. I thought he looked for good for the Colts. It's just a matter of can he stay healthy. Like, he's got upside for sure. I like Paris Campbell. Uh, ultimately, like I said, there's just really no number one guy, and that's okay. But you got a lot of different weapons, and Saquon Barkley will help them out. And Darren Waller is going to be a huge addition, too, for them uh, with Daniel Bellinger. Overall, at least this offense looks way better. They got a lot more targets for Daniel Jones and a better offensive line. Yeah, it's it's way improved offense. And then defensively, which I think the offense was definitely a focus for them for sure. But they didn't, you know, exclude the defense either. Go and get Deontay Banks in the second in the first round. And what da- what he brings here with the Dory Jackson and Cordell Flott and whether Darnay again maybe Flott plays in the slot maybe. Uh, they work some guys in and out, depending. You know, Aaron Robinson could play in the slot, too. Maybe he moves into the slot right there. That uh, might be a good option for them, too. They're going to figure it out. They'll get their best three corners. Not super worried about that. But between Flott, Robinson, and Har- Darnay Holmes, those two guys, those three guys are going to work in that slot role. Uh, interior defensive line, like I said, was kind of in linebacker. was my big thing. Was like, yo, they didn't invest a pick in the linebacking spot. I mean, Jared Davis was admirable there in the playoff stretch for them. But... You know, maybe they're confident about Darian Beavers. Who knows? Micah McFadden's not bad, but I see him as more of a nice backup. However, I do question that linebacking room. Bobby Okereke definitely is going to help them out in that addition, what he brings at the same time. I do, I wouldn't mind adding somebody there. Maybe Darian Beavers, though, can step up. Uh, interior talked about. I would have liked for them to address that. But they did get Sean Robinson, which is going to help them out on a one year kind of prove a deal, let him get fully healthy and. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, Leonard, Big Cat Williams. They've got they've got a good defensive line this year, but long term they may want to look at finding a replacement for Leonard Williams and finding some sort of depth. And same thing here with the edge room, like they don't have very much depth, and there's still time to go get free agents, and they're gonna do that, right? They're gonna go get a backup to help fill some of those needs, but at the same time, they are thin off the edge and they're gonna need to improve there. So Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari, though, when healthy, those two guys are gonna be studs out there on their a pass rushing duo. You bring in Bobby McCain, Dane Belton, still trying to figure things out, maybe coming along. So I like that addition. Their back end should be pretty good too with Jason Pinnock, who was able to play significantly last year for them and do decent as well. So uh, in terms of biggest areas of concern, like I said, just some depth on the defense, looking at future defensive linemen in the interior and the linebacker position, like do they feel confident with Jared Davis and Bobby Okereke? Is that enough for them? Or do they like Darian Beaver? So couple of question marks I have overall though it's a good defense get the job done I knew their priorities were hey we gotta you know improve the secondary some more but we need to focus on continue to add more weapons on the offense for Daniel Jones and I think they did that so overall for me this is a solid B draft grade they did some important things in combination with free agency as well 